Hillsdale College is a small, Christian, classical liberal arts college that operates independently of government funding. And we want you or your son or daughter to apply. At Hillsdale, students grow in heart and mind by studying timeless truths in a supportive community dedicated to the highest things. Hillsdale College costs significantly less than other nationally ranked private liberal arts colleges and receives regular recognition as a best value. And nearly all students receive financial aid. Our robust core curriculum, vibrant student life, and eight to one student to faculty ratio make for an education like no other. For more information or to fill out an application, visit hillsdale.edu backslash info. That's hillsdale.edu backslash info. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beyond the Bubble, a Hillsdale College Career Services production where we take you outside the classroom and into the professional arena to bring you special tips and tricks from recent alumni in all areas of practice. This show is part of the Hillsdale College Podcast Network. More episodes at podcast.hillsdale.edu or wherever you find your audio. I'm Lauren Scott, and joining me today is Frank Masano from Hillsdale's class of 1989 and founding partner at Policy Resolution Group. Thanks for joining me today, Frank. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here. Tell me a little bit about the company you're at right now and what a day in the life looks like at your job. Yeah, so um, I work in a law firm that is called Bracewell. It used to be called Bracewell and Giuliani and used to be called Bracewell and Patterson before that. So I've been here for 20 plus years now. And um, what we do here at the law firm, is I work in the government relations section uh, of the law firm, and we have non-attorneys in uh, that section, and I'm a non-attorney uh, who is um, like a partner in the law firm. And I work mostly in, uh, in the government relations section on public relations issues. So we have a specialty practice in, uh, in our firm where we combine the government relations function with the public relations function. uh, And really, we work together uh, on behalf of clients, mostly in the energy industry, but we also work for healthcare companies. We work for uh, science companies. We work for uh, lots of other types of banking and finance companies. We do lots of work for companies that have faced regulatory challenges um, or, or legislative challenges uh, that, uh, and oftentimes uh, they uh, they play out in the press as well. So that's where uh, where I come in, and I've been again working on these issues for some 20 plus years, where almost to the point now where I know almost every environmental reporter or energy reporter that has covered these issues for that long. So so a day in the life for me is. Uh, a lot of reading uh, or watching of news. I mean, I have a TV in my office, and I have it plastered to news constantly. And generally, it's a, a special station that has uh, four or five different news stations on it. And so I'm trying to stay ahead of trends. Um, it's also knowing about what's happening in Congress uh, and knowing about what's happening with the administration from a regulatory standpoint. And those are the things that are kind of going to drive the issues of our day, right? Uh, for example, today I came into the office and was working. Uh, of course, Congress is in chaos right now because uh, the speaker has been, uh, you know, dethroned from the op- from office by a couple of renegades. And so Congress is kind of frozen, right? But at the same time, the administration is still doing things, and they've announced that they're going to have a major clean energy event on Friday where they're going to announce uh, $8 billion in projects for hydrogen hubs, which should be a way to create a new hydrogen economy going forward by 
you know, getting states and communities involved, like Michigan and New York and Texas and Florida and uh, and uh, California, will all have hydrogen hubs that will then try and you know use the states as a as a test market for how we can you know move uh, a hydrogen economy forward. They made that announcement that changed everything I was working on for the day, right? So now I've got reporters calling me, asking me questions about it, asking me if they if I know what's going to happen, if I know who who's announcing what or what people have one hydrogen hubs. And so, you know, I'm dealing with all those questions a lot of times. And I work for several companies in the hydrogen industry who are part of several hubs. And, uh, you know, I, I'm getting information from those guys and sending them to reporters, sending reporters to them. And so it's it, that's the typical kind of a day, right? The typical kind of a day that there is no typical kind of a day. What is it like knowing and building relationships with environmental reporters? Well, I mean, look, it's about reputation, right? And it's about credibility in my mind. And those two things are hugely important no matter what you do, right? Um, as a graduate of Hillsdale um, long ago, uh, I found that, you know, one of the things that I had was an instant foot in the door in a lot of places, right, because of my background uh, of, and my work at Hillsdale. Um, you know, now th- that it's a good starting point, but you have to build on that, and you have to respect that uh, that credibility that you build on, right? And and uh, you know the other thing you have to do is you have to be useful to people, right? You have to provide them valuable information. You have to provide them timely information, and once you do that, and you get a reputation for providing that timely information, then those people will seek you out as a resource, right? Especially on as a lobbyist or as a uh, uh, as a as a, a public relations person, uh, they know they can get good, quick information fast. Um, that's going to be helpful to you know com, uh, to to, com, to com, completing their task uh, at hand. So um, you really become their expert in a sense, and that's really where. Um, you know, where we make a lot of our bread and butter, where, where our money is made, right? Because now people hire us because they know that we're reliable, valuable, and uh, can produce good information in a timely fashion. And that's what they need to complete their tasks, whether they're uh, a member of Congress or whether they're a company trying to, uh, you know, invest in that member of Congress with uh, knowledge and, 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 and partnership. So uh, the same goes for the administration. Administration, right? Uh, when you're working with the administration, uh, no matter if it's the Biden administration or if it's the Trump administration, you need to be a valuable resource to those people who are regulating, uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, whatever widgets are being made, right? Is it the ethanol industry? Is it uh, power plants? Is it pipelines? Uh, is it the banking system, right? Those are things that all have regulatory structures placed over them. And, uh, you know, uh, many of my clients uh, want to have uh, access to those regulators and, you know, tell them their story. So uh, to make sure that, you know, that, that that's taken into account when regulators regulatory decisions are made. So that's kind of how uh, we see it, uh, that reputation, that credibility, and then, frankly, just providing that valuable information. And you become a resource for all of those opportunities. For students or alumni who are interested in the type of work that you do, what would you recommend they do to get involved? Oh, my gosh. The first thing that you have to do if you're a Hillsdale student is you need to get engaged in the WIP program right? We have this wonderful gem, and it's celebrating its 50th year this year. Um, Hillsdale has a wonderful gem, an opportunity for you to come to Washington and invest some time in what this system works like, uh, looks like, what you do, how you operate, um, places you can go, people you can meet. And it's really an, uh, it's really the type of uh, opportunity that really you don't get a lot of times, right? You can always come and get an internship, but, but this program is designed specially to get you to engage in the Washington community, to learn about the Washington community. And the Kirby Center here in D.C. Uh, is a phenomenal place to learn. When I did the Washington Hillsdale Internship Program in the late 80s, we did not have 
this beautiful Kirby Center, Kirby Center like building that was available to us. We had to stay at people's houses, and we had to. In fact, we our our classes were held in Senator uh, Dan Quayle's office. Just. And I was there the year before he became the vice presidential candidate. So, um, so I'm dating myself. But at the same time, you know, we kind of uh, it was kind of a piecemeal for us. Now they have this beautiful facility on Capitol Hill, uh, the Kirby Center, Kirby Center, which is just a you know a great place to 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 learn and 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 and, and get a. A pay, a get a piece of the Washington culture in in your uh, in your uh, in your learning process. So um, that's what you do. I mean, that's the easiest thing you do. The easiest thing you do is get involved in the Kirby Center and the WIP program, and uh, you have a, a big step forward right there. What did you do right after graduation? So I actually took a summer at home. And uh, my son, I was an athlete in college, so I was always working in the summers. Um, and every summer I was a, a, a garbage man, a, a garbage collector um, in the city of Warren, right, in the Detroit area. And so I did that for the summer and made a bunch of money. And then I moved to Washington right after and started a program and started working entry-level jobs in, on Capitol Hill. Uh, my first job was for Senator Luger. I think I got that job because I was a, a track runner at Hillsdale and was a fast runner and could run three miles in 15 minutes or less. Um, believe it or not, that was one of the reasons why I probably got hired because they always had a race and the uh, the senator wanted to have good runners on his team and uh, he heard uh, that I was a runner and was <laughs> and was interested in hiring me. So I got started in the mailroom and moved into the press office and just slowly moved up into new positions. As I went over nine and a half years of working on Capitol Hill, and it was a great learning experience. I mean, you learn more on Capitol Hill um, in 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 two years. You learn four years of stuff. I always tell uh, students and others. So you really, it's really on the job training that you don't get in the regular jobs. So it was a really great environment. It was a really great learning opportunity. I worked my way up over those nine and a half years in a, a number of different offices. And that's really how I boosted my career and, and got my expertise going in the areas where I started to focus on it mostly was, and I was, when I was at Hillsdale, I wrote for the, uh, for the uh, Hillsdale Daily News as a sports writer. And so um, I had a natural affinity for the media and the press. And so when I worked on Capitol Hill, I started becoming a press assistant and a press secretary and, uh, you know, honed my craft in those jobs. And that's got me into the public relations industry. And, uh, you know, over the 25 or 30 years that followed, I've settled in to being an expert on energy and environment uh, and the media side of that, working with lobbyists on the policy side. And uh, it's been a great career uh, that has gotten me uh, a lots of good uh, lots of good uh, accolades. And um, I've earned lots of, uh, you know, earned lots of, uh, 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 it's been a good career, you know, uh, I've made, made a good life for myself. But it all started because, um, you know, I was willing to engage uh, in the political process and the political system. And I learned that at Hillsdale when I went uh, into the WIP program. And it was a huge piece of defining the direction that I was going to go over the next 30 years. While you were a Hillsdale student, what were you involved in, and how did these involvements help you career-wise? Yeah, I was involved in so much stuff at Hillsdale. I was one of those students who um, really just bounced around from things to thing and tried to do as much as I could. Of course, I was limited some by being an athlete. Um, I was a Hills, I was a track and cross country runner. So we had fall cross country season. We had a winter indoor track season and we had a spring uh, outdoor track season. So I was always involved in athletics. I was a Delta Sigma Phi. I joined that in my junior year. Um, I helped run intramural sports um, as an official and I still do that to this day. I uh, was a hockey referee and Division One basketball and field hockey official now, um, and I've refed lots of different sports over the years, and I, I honed my craft there, my avocation of sorts, 
um, in the intramural leagues. And, in fact, I still joke with a lot of the guys when I see them at homecoming or, like, there's a, a guy here who works in Washington in the policy circles who was a uh, who I refed in the intramural basketball games, and he still reminds me of the bad calls that he thought I made uh, back then when I see him here around town. So, um, you know, so those are things that you remember and you uh, you you still uh, involved in. I was in in music. Um, I was a um, I was a jazz band player when I was in high school, and I really wanted to be in the jazz band in uh, at Hillsdale, but I couldn't because the practice time was always in around the same time as the practice for track. So I ended up joining a symphony, the symphony, the community symphony, and uh, was in the community symphony at Hillsdale. And I never, you know, had been in a symphony before, and you know, that was a, a new experience that I thoroughly enjoyed and got a couple of A's for too, which helped my grade point average in my first couple of years. So that was always good, um, you know, and that got me involved in other music honoraries and things like that. Um, and then, of course, I, I, I had a knack of getting involved in the po- in politics, right? So and I did a little bit of work uh, uh, for the Bush uh, campaign in 88, organizing, you know, Hillsdale uh, students to go volunteer in places in southern Michigan and Indiana. That's also how I got to know Senator Luger. Uh, through that program and process. So I was very involved in that uh, political aspect of things as well. And then, uh, of course, I, I, I stayed involved with the um, uh, with lots of other things that, uh, you know, around town. I mean, I worked uh, as a local basketball official in the local high schools with several friends. Um, I wrote for the local newspaper. I, I had a radio show on WCSR. Um, at the time, which uh, would do in the evenings. And surprisingly, I found I, I had a lot of college listeners who were listening uh, when they would call and make requests and things like that. And I didn't know that they were even listening. So, um, you know, so I did a lot of different things to get a lot of different experiences. And I think that's one of the things that I highly would recommend for students and others is to just stay engaged in as many things, both at the college and in the community, as they could uh, stay involved in. As a political economy major, are there any classes or professors that you remember fondly? Well, I remember all of them pretty fondly. Um, I know one thing that we did was our senior thesis, uh, which I actually did in my junior year. Um, I actually had President Roach as our as our teacher, um, and uh, so that was kind of a unique thing at the time. Uh, so secondly, um, Dr. Craig, of course, who is still involved with the college and the WIB program, he, I was his first advisee. Uh, interestingly, so um, I uh, he had just come to Hillsdale in my sophomore year, and I my advisor had left the year before, and I needed an advisor. So I knew he was involved in the pol- political science and political economics program. I asked him if I could be his if he could be my advisor, and he said yes. And so and now you know he's still uh, at the school, uh, you know, uh, with with hundreds and hundreds of other students who he's advised and been a mentor to since then. So. Um, I Obviously, I saw him at the 50th anniversary of the WIP program at the Kirby Center recently, and uh, fondly, re- you know, remembered uh, his his role and my becoming uh, uh, as engaged as I am in the political process. Um, you know, there were others. Dean um, uh, uh, Dean Andrews was a big part of uh, what I, I got involved in because he was a speech teacher, and I was always that kid who stood up and volunteered to be the first one to give a speech. Right. And in fact, after a while, he used to say, "No, nah, no, nah, somebody besides Frank." Right. Um, but he was a real uh, mentor for me, and, and you know, got me to to be more engaging and more, you know, uh, less shy. I mean, I, I, you can tell by this conversation that I'm a very shy individual. But um, you know, but I, uh, I, uh, I was able to break out of my shell in Dean Andrews' class, and of course. Um, you know, the journalism program was run by Dean Barker at the time, and, uh, you know, she always uh, uh, was, a, was a great inspiration for me, even though maybe she didn't think I was the best writer. Um, I did head in that direction and, uh, and uh, was, was, was really kind of uh, inspired by her. You know, and of course, my athletic coaches, Diane Phillip and, uh, and Bill Lundberg, of course, was a huge influence on me, brought me to Hillsdale, showed me Hillsdale when he was recruiting me, when he, when he moved there just before I came to Hillsdale. And so they were always huge influences. Um, 
uh, on us and and those people who kept us healthy like Paul Beachler and others in the training room you know those were always great people that I enjoyed uh, having time uh, to, to you know to get to know and um, you know really kind of mentor us so um, I think lastly um, you know I always uh, fondly remember staff Right. Um, I was one of those people, knowing Dean Barker and Dean Andrews, I was one of those people that was always involved in student participation programs that uh, involved the dean and uh, and their and, and their leadership roles. And so I tried to, you know, remember staff that was working for Dean Andrews and uh, staff that was working in the business office and staff that was working in Saga at the time, right? But that's what was the dining hall when I was there with Saga. Um, and, uh, you know, those those people, I always tried to be kind and nice to those people because they were important to, you know, the functioning of our, of our role and so uh, of the school. And so I always wanted to, you know, remind them of how important they were to the whole uh, uh, to the whole functioning of Hillsdale. And so, you know, so I was, uh, I, I finally remember a lot of those people as well. All right, Frank. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Well, I'm so happy to do it. And uh, thanks for having me on. You have been listening to Beyond the Bubble, a podcast by Hillsdale College Career Services. This show is part of the Hillsdale College Podcast Network. More episodes at podcast.hillsdale.edu or wherever you find your audio. I'm Lauren Scott, and have a great day. Hello, this is Kyle Mernon, Director of Online Learning here at Hillsdale College. And I'm excited to announce that we've brought Hillsdale's popular and free online courses to the Hillsdale College Podcast Network. And we're starting with one of my favorites, The Second World Wars, a course taught by Victor Davis Hanson and Hillsdale President Larry Piarn. After listening to all eight episodes, you'll have a clear picture of why the war was fought and how the Allied powers ultimately triumphed. The Hillsdale College Online Courses podcast, which I co-host with my colleague here, Juan Davalos, pursues Hillsdale's mission to provide all who wish to learn the education necessary to preserve the civil and religious liberties of America. And we want you to be a part of it at podcast.hillsdale.edu. Subscribe now to the Hillsdale College Online Courses Podcast to hear new episodes every week with additional commentary and insights from our team. Go to podcast.hillsdale.edu to learn more. That's podcast.hillsdale.edu. Thanks for listening.